Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Amanda and today I want to talk about all the books that I read in the month of September. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it is the end of September. By the time you're watching this, it will be October. <laughs> um, I, one quick sort of little asterisk in this conversation, I had a birthday and I took off my birth week to just celebrate and have a good time. And so I didn't necessarily read as many books in the month of September as I thought I would, but you know what? Everybody deserves to do what they want to do to celebrate their birthday. Yay! <laughs> The first book I want to talk about is Iris Johansson, Night and Day, and this was actually on my TBR for this month, or this last month, I think. Um, it's an Eve Duncan novel, and I quickly realized that this is book 21, I think, of 26 Eve Duncan novels. You can't start anywhere in this series. Like, you need to let the series develop because these books are way too complex to simply dive in and it's not the standalone mystery with recurring characters there actually is a recurring story involved in this book and I needed to catch up a little bit so I actually read her first book first to catch up on the characters um, there's a little bit of the story that I missed because it was book one and not book 20 but I started reading this book I could not finish it I thought that I liked Iris Johansson the first book I read of hers the, the first Eve Duncan novel that I read of hers was fine this one it just wasn't I was shocked at how simplistic it was and the fact that the um, the criminal characters in this book would actually like give away exposition in the dialogue like it was just way too simplistic and I think I made it about 150 pages in and I just I would not recommend this I did not have a good time I finally got to read Time Con Times Convert by Deborah Harkness. Super excited to get to read this one. For those of you who don't know, I recently read the All Souls Trilogy. I'll link the video that I did in the description box below, but um, this is a standalone novel outside of the trilogy, but I would have to say, I enjoyed this. You definitely catch up with the characters from the trilogy, but I would not recommend that you read this if you have not read the trilogy. Even though it is technically a standalone story, um, it is the story of Marcus, who's Matthew's sire, and Phoebe and their relationship. Phoebe is a warm blood and she has decided to become a vampire. And it's the story of the traditional way that vampires are quote unquote born, how they're supposed to come into their own, learn about their new powers and their new bodies and all that good stuff. And the story is told in tandem with flashback of Marcus stories, Marcus's story um, that takes place during the American Revolutionary War. So Deborah Harkness does such a good job of fantasy historical fiction. I love the world that she builds. So good, so good, so good. She also weaved in here though, the perspective of Diana from the All Souls trilogy. And I thought it might be a little bit of overkill. Um, I don't know that we needed Diana's perspective, but for me it was fun because I was catching up on the All Souls trilogy. For people who haven't read the All Souls trilogy and the characters that are in that, they won't have fun with this book at all. So start with the All Souls trilogy. I would totally recommend all four books, but this is not a great place to start. Parker, if you're watching this and you give me a thumbs up, I will buy your coffee <laughs> next time. Parker is my nephew, y'all, and he gave me this book for my birthday. Um, he knows that I like a lot of nonfiction, and he was looking for something that would be a nonfiction fun book. This is The Richest Man in Babylon, and it was actually written in 1926, so it's been around a long, long, long time, and it is about money management but it is told in such a way that it's a narrative story about the richest man in Babylon giving advice on how he manages his money based on fun stories and quips and analogies and things from his experience so it's not dry like a textbook it's told in narrative format but there's some really good if you have um, a late high school early college college graduate student who's just getting out in the world and maybe needs to learn a little bit about the fundamentals of money management and investing, 
um, not necessarily how to invest, but that you should invest, this would be a really great book for them. I highly recommend it. Thank you, Parker. I love you. <laughs> I got the first two books of a Nora Roberts trilogy on the Barnes and Noble Annex page and I was super excited to get a steal on some relatively new releases. So this was released in 17, this was 18, the last book in the trilogy was like late 2019 release I think. And I was so excited to find the first two books in a good deal. I bought them both without actually reading what they were about. Um, once I got them I was a little uncomfortable so this is Chronicles of the One is the trilogy, the name of the trilogy, and it is about, quote unquote, the doom, and it's an illness that wipes out three quarters of the Earth's population. So in this day of COVID scare, our economy is not doing as well it was, there's a lot of high unemployment, there's a lot of high anxiety, this might not be the trilogy for you. <laughs> But once I was able to kind of set aside the I'm at home because COVID has closed down everything that I love to do part of me, I got involved in the story and I had a really good time. So year one is literally about that. It's the first year. So the doom wipes out three quarters of the earth's population. It's about how it happens. It's about the survivors. The survivors actually, there's one set of survivors that are just immune to the doom and there's another set of survivors that are also immune but they develop magical powers and the government in the u.s is perplexed and curious about this so they start trying to round up immune and magical people in order to uh, experiment on them and test them there's another set of people who are also immune but they don't develop magical powers that begin hunting people with magical powers because they are nervous about the, the powers. And so there are all these kind of factions that are trying to, to hunt each other down. So people are running. The communities that they used to live in have collapsed. There, there aren't really any grocery stores anymore. There's nobody left to, to you know, run the, the trash service and the, you know, the news station and all of these things that we kind of take for granted today. So people have to reestablish their community. So it's characters that are coming to terms with losing people, getting their life, coming together to form communities. I loved this book. I did a book review on it. I'll link it in the description box below. There is a part of me, I, I read A Last Babylon when I was in high school, and I loved A Last Babylon because I love the analytic side, the understanding how many people there are and who can contribute what and learning how to do new things. And I love that part of community building. So I thought this was a tremendous book. I, I just had a great time with it. I can't say enough about it. And so immediately after I finished year one, I started Of Blood and Bone, which is book two. Again, it came out in 2018. This is actually about the, um, the rise of the quote unquote, the one. So there's this looming light versus dark sort of uh, confrontation coming. And the one is going to lead the forces of the light and fight the darkness. And she, she was born at the very, very, very end of this book. This book starts out with her as she's 13 years old and she starts to train. She starts to, so it's the training montage book of the series. Usually book two in a trilogy is a little bit slow because they've already introduced the characters. They have to develop it, but they can't give too much away until the final sort of crescendo of book three. But I love the way that Nora Roberts tackled this book. She actually introduces additional characters. So you're watching this child develop throughout the, I think it takes place over about six years. You're watching this child develop. She's making friends. She's learning new people. And these are people that will eventually be important in book three. So it's a great way to do a transitional book. And again, I finished it and immediately ordered book three, Rise of the Magics. Um, again, this one came out in mid to late 2019, so it's a fairly recent release. And of course, this book is the final battle of 
the light versus dark. The one is um, at, at her full power. She's amassing forces. My analytical brain loved this because they talk a lot about the strategies of where they need to go, the footholds they need, the forts they need, the, the troops that they need, how they need to train everyone. And so there's a little bit of that in there. I read a couple of reviews that thought that was so boring, <laughs> but I loved it. I thought it was great. The characters that were introduced both in the first and the second book are very vivid in the third book. So it's not necessarily just about the one um, and her being the heroine. It's actually about the group that you've been watching grow and develop and become a family over the course of these last nine years. Or I guess 19 years if you, if you, yeah, I guess 19 years if you truly start at the beginning of the doom. So you watch these people, you've, you've gotten to love them, and um, in book three is that final crescendo. So, I, and I thought that she did a good job of wrapping up all of the individual storylines from book one and two, and she left room if she wants to explore this universe again, I think she could. I think that there would be enough for her and I kind of hope that she does. But again, I would totally recommend this trilogy. I thought it was really great. This is also a Barnes and Noble Annex by, this is Irish Thoroughbred by um, Nora Roberts. This was published in 1981 and this little bug up here actually says this is a special edition of her very first book. It reads like her very first book. I think this is before she really learned how to develop characters into people that you truly love. Um, it's very small. It's, um, you know, like 200 pages. So it's a very quick and easy read, but it's very stereotypical of romances from back in the 80s. So it's a woman who, against all odds, has this loving heart, even though she's been abused for her entire life by people who've taken advantage of her, and she meets a man, and I, I just, I didn't really love the story. Um, I didn't love the hero. I didn't really love the heroine all that much. She's from Ireland, and she's a fiery redhead, and um, she's a little slip of a thing. I think there are other Nora Roberts books that are way more worth your time. This is one of the books that I actually just recently finished. I, when I was writing, when I was writing my book review, which I'll link in the description below, when I was writing my book review, I actually compared this to like the book version of a Hallmark movie. What I didn't realize is Debbie McComer is actually the author who wrote the stories upon which Cedar Cove on the Hallmark, it's a series on the Hallmark channel is, is based on. So it is truly like a Hallmark story. And it's a woman who, um, she, for the love of her brother, she embezzled money. He is a drug, drug addict and convinced her that, that thugs were going to kill him if he didn't pay them back money he owed. And so she embezzled money. She was convicted. He disappeared. She went to prison for three years. And when she gets out, she doesn't have any friends. No one from her past will talk to her because of what she's done. And um, she's in need, basically. And she stumbles into a church. And inside of that church is a pastor who has lost his wife. And he is struggling with the grief of um, that loss while at the same time trying to be a father to his two children who are also struggling with the grief of their loss. And um, he's trying to be a spiritual leader for a community um, in his church. And he's kind of trying to find his faith again. And so in helping this woman, he helps himself. It's told in the intertwining narratives, Shay and Drew, their story is sort of intertwined. I would say for me, I didn't care for the writing as much. It's just, it's so simplistic. I think at one point um, it says something like, she thought, or she wondered how he was doing. And then quote, how are you doing? Like she asked him and it's, it just, it felt so simple. But I would say for those of you who are just looking for something that is a little bit more wholesome, that is so easy to read because you're exhausted at the end of the night or you're about to travel or you just need one of those easy reads, this might be the book for you. It just wasn't really the book for me. Drew and Shay, 
This is a book that I'm actually reading right now, so I will finish it in the month of September because I still have a little bit of time left. This is Karen Slaughter's Pieces of Her, and it is so far a really compelling story about a woman who is celebrating her 30th birthday, 31st birthday, um, having lunch with her mom, and a gunman walks in. They're at, the, they're at a restaurant in a mall, and a gunman walks in, and he kills two people, and this woman's mother, who's in her 50s, just, you know, speech pathologist, like, regular mom, disarms him and then, like, gets stabbed in the hand and then, like, uses that knife that's in her hand to, like, kill him. Like, like, ninja stuff. Like, who is my mother? And um, so, of course, police get suspicious. They're wanting to know what's going on. So her mother forces her on the run. I don't know why yet because I haven't gotten to that part of the story, but this woman is trying to figure out who she is and of course who her mom is, like what in the world is happening? So, so far it's a pretty compelling story. I will say the main character, her name is Andy, and I'm having a lot of trouble liking Andy. For a 31 year old woman, she just does not have her life together at all. And I find that to be just a little bit like, you're older than this, like you're out of your 20s, get it together, lady. <laughs> Um, and so I'm finding to have a little bit of difficulty liking her as a character, but I haven't finished the book yet. So I am sure she will grow and develop and find her strength and figure out who she is and why she is the way she is. So I'm excited. I like the way Karen Slaughter writes. I'm looking forward to finishing this book. That's it. That's all I read in September. But I had a great month. I really enjoyed 98% of what I read. And thank you again, Parker, for my richest man in Babylon. Uh, give me a thumbs up and I'll buy you a coffee. <laughs> if you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. Like, share, subscribe, do all of those things. If there are books that you're excited about that you want me to look into as well, let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you next time. Bye.